If you ask the poets to describe the beauty of the Kajumbalar princess, they will compare the beauty of that Manganala to the beauty of the twilight evening. As the day passes and the evening fades, a sadness rises in the mind, a quiet pleasure also appears. After the final rays of Adam have faded, the darkness of night is closing in on all sides. Thus to get rid of the tiredness that appears in the mind, it is enough to look at the sky, how blissful the myriads of flame lights lit by goddess Vanamadavi in the blink of an eye. Do they not dazzle the eyes like the burning torch of the sun? Can you see them with your own eyes? If the moon also rises, there is no need to ask. The world glows in the moon of pearly blaze of perfection, soul and body flourish. It is true that when the evening comes, the lotus blossoms. It is true that after sunset, the Kuthugaladvani of the birds are put to rest. But the sound of the Simakala from the church and the sweet sound of the Nadaswara instrument, how sweet it is now! From the bell tops the soft fingers raise the redeeming vena, and what a song of joy the harp! The beauty of Kajumbalar's princess Vanatha was indistinctly mixed with the tinge of sadness and the luster of joy. Similar to her beauty, her nature was also twofold. If you look at her once, you will look like Chandramati and Savitri, who have become sorrowful. In another time, Aramba and Urvazi will be like Madhavi in the world of God and will become a statue of pleasure and life. It can be assumed that this is the tragic form of Kanagi who lost her husband at another time. At one point, Mala falls under the spell of Vativeller and appears like Vali whose heart has stopped. At another time, Ananda will be formed so that the whole world will cry out and rejoice, thinking that she is the goddess who was happy by garlanding Kartikeya. For many days, even a small smile could not be seen on Vanati's face. Other days she would be smiling non-stop. The sound of that laughter will spread into the air into billions of tiny droplets and fill the world with joy. It can be speculated that the reason for Vanati's dual nature is her birth and upbringing. While she was in her mother's womb, the little velar of Kajumbalar was engaged in deadly wars. News of success and failure were coming alternately. These caused alternate joy and sorrow in her mother's heart. Shortly after Vanatha's birth, her mother passed away. Then Vanati was brought up by her father eye to eye. But this too did not last. Vanatha's father, a warrior, did not want to sit in the palace even in front of his beautiful daughter. After Veerapandian fled and hid, he pursued the Elamite forces that accompanied him and went to Sri Lanka. There he lost his life in the battlefield and got the title of Eathupada Small Velar in history. After that, Vanati's life was miserable for some time. Only women who have lost their mothers and been raised by their fathers can know what that sadness feels like. Although the parentless girl was brought up in the Kajumbalar palace, no one could take the place her father had occupied in her soul. Many people consoled him in various ways. Regret not, child. Your father will come into your womb and be born again as a mighty man, he will perform mighty deeds that the world will marvel at, said one. These words were deeply rooted in Vanatha's soul. She tried to get rid of the grief and fatigue caused by separation from her father by thinking about her imaginary son. She was somewhat successful in that. What will the son born to him be like? Day by day she will be immersed in the mental state of what kind of behavior he will perform and what kind of heroic deeds he will perform. Through her imaginary eye, she saw the heroic son going to distant lands and winning great battles. She hurried back and saw him laying all the offerings of victory at her feet. She saw him sitting on the throne of the hero wearing Manadu. Rajati saw the kings coming and paying tribute to him. On seeing his face, she saw Elamuthai cheering and rising like a magadal at the sight of the full moon. She saw him crossing the seas carrying the soldiers of hundreds of ships and hoisting the banner of victory in the countries beyond. Mother! The unknowing ghost woman would sometimes touch her belly and rub her belly. Maybe her imaginary son has arrived in her womb. All the men and women in Palantami have heard the story of Bharat. They had also asked about the manner in which Kunditavi had given birth. Similarly, she wonders which deity is going to come and bless her with a child. She never thought of marrying anyone then. After coming of age and knowing the world to some extent, 
she knew that she should marry a husband and beget children through him. Even then, Manaraj did not think too much about her husband. There was a change in her life and attitude after going to the old palace. Kundavadavi's proud love gave her comfort and joy. Kuntheve's sophisticated manners and witty speeches took Vanatha to another world she had never known before. The courtship of other royal ladies who had come to the old palace like her gave her a new interest in life. Her inner heart told her that she must have some glory to be admired by them. At the same time, her natural good nature and generosity led her to be kind to everyone. In the midst of all this, Vanati did not stop dreaming of her heroic son. It was during this time that she happened to see Pawnee's lover. As a result, all her mental fortresses were shattered. She knew that she could have a son only after attaining her husband. Before that, the indifference that a husband was right, whoever he was, was in her heart. But what to do with this wicked mind? It has not gone to the prince who is the eye of the people of Chola Nadu. The kings of the fifty-six nations said, Marry my girl. Isn't he a proud person who can plead that? Will such a person even look back at himself? Could she not even dream of the privilege of marrying him? How is it possible for the prince to marry another man after this evil mind? Therefore, should all the mental forts she had built up all this time about the heroic son who was going to be born in her womb be shattered? Just thinking about all this made her heart explode. She looked sad again. Knowing her heart, the younger bratty showed her special love and support. She tried her best to cheer up Vanathi. She especially made it clear that her heart went to Pawnee's lover, that it was not a bad thing, it was not an impossible thing. The child told the astrologer Vanati about the son to be born, and nursed it with incense to her heart, her mental kingdom kept expanding. Depression and euphoria alternated more rapidly. As if he couldn't bear the heartache caused by longing, she could not bear the excitement of happiness either. When both were overdone, she fainted, she saved her life with this natural anesthetic device. The Parantaka Chakraborty play that Vanatha saw while visiting Tanjore, the ominous voice she heard that night, and the terrifying sight she saw added to her anxiety. That day she became well aware of the extent of the never-ending enmity between the Khajumbalar dynasty and the Palyavar Kyratrasar clan. She also knew the extent of the influence that the Pavurkars had achieved in the Chola country at that time. Will the Vindictives allow themselves to have their way in the case of Prince Arul Lishvarma? Will their housewives be idle even if they allow it? Will Ila Irani of Pavuvar agree? Her influence and power are known to the world. Whenever I think of Nandini, the memory of the beautiful cobra comes to Vanati. She was aware of her enmity over Ilya Prati. Doesn't it flow on its own? Why, even if that venomous snake touches Pawnee's body, it can be touched. In the middle of the night, in front of the emperor who was lying sick, a form of Nandini stood. Is it really Nandini? What is the reason why the emperor shouted in such a panic voice? Why does Ilya Prati refuse to talk to her about this? Yes. Ilya Prati's mind has also changed. He doesn't talk to himself as lively as before. He often leaves himself and seeks solitude. Something is bothering him. Maybe because of concern about Pawnee's silver or something. That's why he refuses to tell her about it. Is it really Nandini? What is the reason why the emperor shouted in such a panic voice? Why does Ilya Prati refuse to talk to her about this? Yes. Ilya Prati's mind has also changed. He doesn't talk to himself as lively as before. He often leaves himself and seeks solitude. Something is bothering him. Maybe because of concern about Pawnee's silver or something. That's why he refuses to tell her about it. Is it really Nandini? What is the reason why the emperor shouted in such a panic voice? Why does Ilya Prati refuse to talk to her about this? Yes. Ilya Prati's mind has also changed. He doesn't talk to himself as lively as before. He often leaves himself and seeks solitude. Something is bothering him. Maybe because of concern about Pawnee's silver or something. That's why he refuses to tell her about it. 
maybe because of concern about Pawnee's silver or something. That's why he refuses to tell her about it. Maybe because of concern about Pawnee's silver or something. That's why he refuses to tell her about it. Even today Ilya Prati suddenly disappeared. What do these women struggle with in his absence? What do they sting? Those who do not know what anxiety is. No matter what happens, there is nothing short of their kumala. Vanatha can never tolerate their taunts. And for these two or three days Vanati was drowning in the same ocean of sadness, so their idle talk fell on her ears. Ilya Prati left looking for where he had gone. She came to know that some council was meeting in the palace of the Elder Queen and that he had gone there. So she went to that palace. By the time Vanati left, the congregation had disbanded. She learned that the great Maharani and her wealthy son Madhurandhagar were talking in private. Somehow this news made Vanati even more worried. From there she left again. At the gate of the palace there was a great commotion of the people. I don't know what the matter is. There is a lot of interest to see Ilya Prati immediately. In the palace, Sadie interrogated the women one by one. A Sadi says that a little earlier the younger Prati was talking privately with a valiant Vaishnava named Alvar Kadayan, and then went towards the stream in the palace garden. Nowadays, he doesn't like anyone bothering the younger Brady when he's seeking solitude. So Vanati hesitated whether to go or not to look for Ilya Prati by the stream. At that time, a monkey named Warani came running. At the gate of the palace there was a great commotion of the people. I don't know what the matter is. There is a lot of interest to see Ilya Prati immediately. In the palace, Sadie interrogated the women one by one. A Sadi says that a little earlier the younger Prati was talking privately with a valiant Vaishnava named Alvar Kadayan, and then went towards the stream in the palace garden. Nowadays, he doesn't like anyone bothering the younger Brady when he's seeking solitude. So Vanati hesitated whether to go or not to look for Ilya Prati by the stream. At that time, a monkey named Warani came running. At the gate of the palace there was a great commotion of the people. I don't know what the matter is. There is a lot of interest to see Ilya Prati immediately. In the palace, Sadie interrogated the women one by one. A Sadi says that a little earlier the younger Prati was talking privately with a valiant Vaishnava named Alvar Kadayan, and then went towards the stream in the palace garden. Nowadays, he doesn't like anyone bothering the younger Brady when he's seeking solitude. So Vanati hesitated whether to go or not to look for Ilya Prati by the stream. At that time, a monkey named Warani came running. A Sadi says that a little earlier the younger Prati was talking privately with a valiant Vaishnava named Alvar Kadayan, and then went towards the stream in the palace garden. Nowadays, he doesn't like anyone bothering the younger Brady when he's seeking solitude. So Vanati hesitated whether to go or not to look for Ilya Prati by the stream. At that time, a monkey named Warani came running. A Sadi says that a little earlier the younger Prati was talking privately with a valiant Vaishnava named Alvar Kadayan, and then went towards the stream in the palace garden. Nowadays, he doesn't like anyone bothering the younger Brady when he's seeking solitude. So Vanati hesitated whether to go or not to look for Ilya Prati by the stream. At that time, a monkey named Warani came running. Pawnee's silver has drowned in the sea. She cried after telling the terrible news. The other girls also started shouting oh after hearing this. At first, Vanati had no emotion. The other girls stared at her as she stood idly by. Innocent. It was your misfortune that the prince drowned in the sea. So many eyes seemed to stare at her. Vanati could not bear it any longer. Couldn't even stand there. She ran towards the stream in the palace garden. While running towards the stream, Vanati's soul was also running. She understood the meaning of the words, the prince is drowned in the sea. Overcoming the shock, another thought rose up. For the past few days, whenever I looked at the water, the prince's face was reflected in it. Whenever he stands on the shore, his face literally appears in the water. If you touch it, it disappears. Vanati realized what the reason was. The prince is thinking of me when he drowns in the sea, 
he has called me. Unknowingly, I was standing on the bank watching it. Aha! What a mistake I made! There is no use in thinking about the past. What to do next? Ghost girl! Want to think about what to do next? What is there to think about? The stream that flows through the palace garden flows into the royal lake. A Ross Aller goes to the sea and merges with it. A prince awaits under the sea. He is waiting for me. He is waiting for me in a wonderful palace of pearls and coral under the sea. What else do I have to do in this world without going to meet him? For whom should I be here? When Vanati made this decision, there was a kind of peace in Vanati's heart, her spread is contained, sorrow is gone, worry is over. She went straight to the river bank. She came down the marble steps, she looked around. A boat was coming in the distance. The person in it is Ilya Prati. Who is the man with her? The child appears to be the youth who first met the soothsayer at home and took the straw to Sri Lanka. It seems he was the one who brought the news about the prince. That is why Ilya Prati takes him alone, he listens and knows the details. He has left me saying that he will suffer if I know. If he comes I can't do as I please. He will say something pacifying, he would console me and stop me from going to meet the prince. But, is it fair to leave without telling him and saying goodbye one last time? You were so kind to this fatherless orphan girl. Shouldn't you say a word of thanks to him? No way. Can't wait a moment longer. Here is his face in the water. Behold his full form shines. He calls me, he smiles and calls out. All obstacles are gone for me to smell you, come on. He calls it. And why the delay? Aha! Why does the head spin like this? Do you get fainting spells or what? There is no harm in fainting. If you fall into this stream without falling on the bank. Vanati's wish was fulfilled. She fell into the water. The boiling body cooled sweetly and the heart cooled. She was going down down down. It is impossible to say how far and how long she went. It can also be a few seconds, maybe many ages. Yes, she has reached the wonderful world under the sea. This is what Nagalakam is all about. Oh, what beautiful mansions! How many tiers of cushions without end, without knowing where the peak is, these mansions rise. Why is the light here so cool and soothing? The rays of light seem to have cooled down as they penetrate the water. Where does the light come from? It seems to be coming from the palace walls. Yes. No wonder. Is it natural for fairy tale palaces of gold, pearls, diamond vitreous, and headstones of serpents to emit a cold light? Who are the crowd? How are their temples so glorious? What are the tejas in the faces? Don't they all look like heavenly men and women? Isn't it heavenly that we have come? Have you come to heaven? Then, like a dream within a dream, certain events unfolded at high speed. They took Vanatha to a hall decorated with Singhara decorations. In the middle of the hall, Pani's Selvar greeted Vanatha with a smile on his golden face. To the sound of Deva Tundupis, raining of bells and flowers, to the sound of auspicious chants, the prince and Vanati exchanged garlands and got married. Unable to bear the excess of bliss, Vanati fainted. Two arms picked her up after lying unconscious for a long time. At first Vanathi assumed that the Akaras were Pani's Selvara's Thirukarams. She thought he was the one picking her up, hugging her and putting her on his lap to make her swoon. But when the bangle was tapped on the hands, a little doubt arose. Vanati! Vanati! You have done this. The voice sounded feminine. With great effort, Vanati opened her eyes slightly. Kundave's face caught her eye. Sister! Sister! Did you come to my wedding? Didn't see yourselves? Vanati's mouth murmured. 